Good morning. I'd like to call the uh, special workshop meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Uh, it is now, um, let's say, 8, uh, almost 8.40. Let's call it 8.39. Uh, it is uh, Thursday, November 20th, uh, 2014. Uh, the purpose of the meeting is to uh, review the draft capital plan, five-year capital plan for 2016-2020. And I'd like to welcome uh, members of the uh, Board of Finance uh, to, the, to the meeting, uh, Chairman Hoey, uh, members uh, Lou Federici and uh, Ken Garriman. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy you guys are here. All right. The first um, department would be the Police Department, Chief Turbile and Deputy Chief uh, Hutchinson. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning, morning everybody. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have the, the deputy chief is the one that putting the uh, the budget together this year. Uh, in case people haven't heard, uh, we'll be retiring April 1st, so I'm trying to just help Jeff through uh, this process. So with that, I'll let him uh, report on uh, what we're planning to do for the next five years. Okay, I'm on, I guess. You're on. Um, uh, not a very complicated. Uh, of numbers for us here. Um, the numbers are getting big because of some certain projects, but uh, I'll just work through it year by year. Uh, moving forward for 20 for the 2015-16 fiscal year, um, there's a couple of new items that, that, that hadn't been on there in the past, but um, I'll explain those to you. You'll see body-worn cameras listed for $30,000. Um, as many of you know, uh, the way policing is moving in the country, uh, there's a real push um, nationally, statewide, and locally for implementing the use of body-worn cameras on police officers. And if you're not familiar with what that is, uh, in addition to the patrol vehicle cameras, which we've had in place for years, uh, there's a new system where each officer wears a, a camera right on their body. And, you know, the, the placement of it, the type of camera, that's, that's something that's being worked out. Um, but uh, what it does is it gives a, a uh, full-time basic recording of what the officer is doing the whole time. With the vehicle cameras, you're limited by what the car, where the car is pointing, what it's seeing. Once the officer leaves the car, goes into a particular scene, runs from the car, chases somebody, goes behind the car, you, you really don't know what's going on. So uh, these cameras are the wave of the future. Um, the chief and I have had long discussions about what we should be doing uh, locally, and it's our belief that we should be moving in that direction. So to that end, uh, we budgeted that number, and luckily enough, there's a, there's a private citizen who wishes to remain anonymous uh, who had approached us during our consideration of this project uh, wishing to donate money to the police department um, and was looking for projects that he thought would be appropriate to, to, to fund. And we have a commitment um, from this individual to fund the full project. Uh, so they've committed uh, through a letter to over the next three years really, which is really only uh, uh, about 14 months, to commit $10,000 in 2014, $10,000 in 2015, and $10,000 in 2016. So by January of 16, which is when we're hoping to implement this, this program, the $30,000 will all be in place. So I've talked to Sheila about that for earmarking that money, keeping it in a separate fund, and, and again, um, a local family uh, who they said um, they just want to remain anonymous and it's a project that they wanted to uh, to uh, participate in. So uh, we're budging it in there. That's why you see that number and hopefully you'll see it uh, zero out when uh, when those donations come in. Um, Quick question. Are you going to purchase, uh, use all 30000 this year? No, we're not going to spend anything yet. The, the vendor we're looking at right now, there's still some issues we have to work on yet. There's still some legal issues, some privacy issues, and that sort of thing that we still have to vet out within the, the legal system. We're also looking at, we like the deputy said, we have uh, in-car cameras that are a certain vendor. The vendor that we're using is supposedly coming out with a new product in June, which is supposed to work with the, the car video camera. So now we don't have two file servers to save stuff. It's supposed to be interact with each other. So it would be better, you, you know, rather than carrying two microphones, one for the car camera and then one for the body camera. We're, I mean, we're hiring thinner people, 
in your <laughs> you're, running of, you're running out of area to put the stuff. <laughs> and it really is like becoming an issue, especially with the, the, the thinner people. How much the waste is only so big. You know, we need to get that, some... uh, that wasn't a requirement 40 years ago. <laughs> right, we were oh. 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 Wow. Actually, the fact of the matter was, 40 years ago, he was thin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Right, oh, my was, God. Uh, well, good, good I, was, response. I was fresh out of the Air Force and I was 150 pounds. <laughs> I put some weight on since then. But yeah, so trying to we're trying to make sure that it integrates with the other stuff we have, so we don't have too much going on in the officers. So, Chief, if I understand this correctly, the total um, expense will be in the upcoming 2016 budget. Right. He's planning to give the 10,000 this year uh, before. Uh, 1231. Right. Then he's going to give us 10 in the 15, and then early 16, he's going to get another 10. So we'll have $30,000. And again, we'll go through the same town purchasing process right. and the bidding and all that sort of stuff. It's just this private man came to us, a Gilbert citizen, and he just loves the town and he wanted to do something to give back. Okay. So right. now, will this um, be enough to? Cover your full staff. We're, we're, hoping, staff. we're hoping it is. Yes. Okay. Okay. We're still not sure of the pricing. Like I said though, the, there are other systems out there. If we use the other systems, we'd have enough. We're not really sure about the new, the other vendor that we're currently using, mm -hmm. what the pricing is going to be on that. But I, I'm sure it'll be on the same ballpark. Do we know what the uh, lifespan is of these of this equipment? Again, it's electronics. You're probably talking three, four, or five years, depending on the use and the wear and tear mm -hmm. and. Um, they're still new, so I, I don't know. They're going to be exposed to the weather. So I'm saying there's a lot of issues still to work out with the body camera, but as with the cars, camera, when they first came out, we had to work through all kinds of different issues, and hopefully in a couple of years. It's nice not getting the first one to get it, let somebody else figure out the issues and right. um, maybe improve the product before we get it. Okay. Great. Thank you. Quickly, out of curiosity, are these on eight hours for full shift? Uh, you can turn them on. Everything, or you can you, you can, can turn, turn them, on, them on. on. You see, that's the issues we still have to work okay. through. Is, you know, there's still some legalities of, of, of video recording. You know, you and I as two employees in a conversation. There's those issues that still have to be done. There's issues of going into somebody's personal house and recording in it while you're in their their house. And other FOI is that now FOIable that you're in somebody's house and somebody can then FOI the recording to see what your house looks like. So there's all kinds of there, there are you have issues. To develop a protocol, right? And law enforcement, we've done we've had policies, but we're still legally trying to figure out all those other issues, especially with the FOI stuff. So the the officer has the availability to turn it on and turn it off. It's not like right. the, the camera in the car, I believe, is, is always on, is that correct? Well, they, they can turn that on and off, they too. Can. Uh, we have policies when they can turn it on and off, Okay. so it would have to be you know, the same type of thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on, in uh, also in 16, uh, you'll see police audio recording system. We have a, a system in the building that records all phone calls, radio calls, um, and, and we need that for, again, uh, records retention purposes, for investigations. We go back and pull recordings to see what happened, uh, citizen complaints, anything in that regard. We need to maintain that system. It's end of life. It's about 13 years old. The current system is no longer supported. Um, so this is, this is actually an upgrade rather than a new system because um, the, the current software we have is so old they can't even, can't even ma maintain it. Um, so we need to buy a new uh, audio recording system, and that's that 13866 number. Um, soft body armor replacement, that's the bulletproof vest, as most people know it. Um, it's split up, as you see, because we generally uh, apply for and receive a grant from the federal government under Department of Justice for 50% reimbursement. Our expectation is um, that need for 12900 out of the general fund and, and 12900 funded through the federal grant, and that's our best guess on... Uh, replacement of expiring vests. They have a five-year life. Um, and in addition, when people leave, we have to buy new ones. So um, that's where we come up with that number. Um, and then we move down to the patrol, the uh, police vehicles. Um, we're looking at uh, two patrol cars next year, an unmarked vehicle, and all the vehicle components that go with them. For the last couple of years, the vehicles we've been buying have been price stabilized by Ford, uh, but they're starting to move up. and. Uh, the equipment um, number has has gone up as well. 
One of the items that we use in the car is the radar units. We've had those for about 13, 14 years, and they're coming to the end of their useful life. So as we buy a new car, we're going to buy a new radar unit. So that's one of the items that uh, you'll see is bringing up the number for I have a quick question. vehicle components. Um, was there a question? I'm yes, sorry. if I yeah. can. Yeah. Um, but directly on the vehicle replacement, I remember, I don't know if it was last year, maybe a couple years ago, it had a switch from, obviously, Ford stopped making the full-size sedans. Correct. We've been buying the Explorers, which I've noticed, by the way, around the state. I mean, it seems like a very common it's vehicle. It's the new... It's the new. It's, it's working out. You haven't had any. I oh, mean, you had some reticence. I remember at the very beginning, Chief, and then just sort of. What, is there any no, feedback from the officers? The officers like it during the storms. They they were able to get around in the storms because uh, there is a little higher. Uh, it's a little bigger inside for the for the prisoners. The the Taurus is the uh, the sedan version of it. Very small to get the prisoner out. So we've had good luck with them. The miles the miles uh, I believe the gas mileage is lower than we anticipated. It dropped off quite a bit, so we saved some money on the gas miles also. So we're getting better gas miles? Better gas miles. Correct. We're getting oh, okay. better gas miles than, okay. than the old LTD. Wow. Miles. Great. Okay. So I, just to pick up on uh, Mr. Ferrici's question, uh, we get him better wear and tear out of him? Have we gone that long with the cars yet? Uh, well, we're, we're lucky. We're, we have the public works department. We're yeah. getting a hundred thousand miles out of them. You know, we're not. Well, those aren't at hundred. We're not yet. there those yet. Are no, that's what I was asking. I don't think we're there yet. So yeah. we're we're not there with those. But yeah. the first fifty, we haven't really been going through the same as the other cars. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't anticipate any difference. Okay, but you're right, Lou. I mean, all around the state. I've seen them in many towns. I travel a lot, a lot of towns. I just go uh -huh. switching so it to those. State yeah. Yeah, the states has the Tauruses, and then they also have the, the uh, expedition with the explorers. Okay. Um, let's see. The, um, the next big number um, is the HVAC system in the building. And as you see, uh, I'll, I'll basically cover all the years now. Uh, moving out, if, if you recall, we, um, we had some issues with the, with the HVAC system. It's an 18-year-old building. We were anticipating and planning for uh, replacing uh, condensing units, which are end of life, water heaters, things like that. So moving back a while, we've been having studies done on the building uh, to tell us how much money we're going to need, what uh, systems need to be replaced. We uh, employed an engineering firm at the recommendation of the town to do a full study on the building. They came back with a really big number, um, more than we had ever imagined it would be. Um, we kind of we kind of held off and broke that project down into several years, and we asked we asked that company to come back with a five-year plan for us. I've reviewed that with the Standing Building Committee and continue to review that with them um, to get their input, um, and it's it's been very valuable. Um, so their last five-year plan, I I went to the Standing Building Committee and asked them to review the plan that was submitted by the engineer, make whatever changes they recommend. They dropped the numbers down a little bit. Um, and projected out for us what we should anticipate and expect to spend uh, for the next five years to replace um, air handling units, condensing units, water heaters. Uh, the control system is being replaced right now, which is 18 years old. Um, and all those have some efficiencies built in that would hopefully pay back. Um, I can't imagine it's going to pay back anywhere close to what we're spending. Um, but these are, it's a critical, you know, it's a critical building. It needs to be maintained. Um, uh, I'm relying upon the engineers and standing and building to give me the numbers here. So as you see the numbers pushed out through um, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, um, that's where they're coming from. Uh, so in 16 it's the 2, in 15, 16 it's 217, 875. It's a big number. It's a big number and I, you know, I'm happy to answer questions on it, but... Uh, Did we already have an authorization on the study? We had some money that all came mm -hmm. for this project already. Mm -hmm. Right, we can yeah, probably we explain yeah. that together. Yeah. Okay. You spent already some money on uh, design? Correct. And, yep. Okay, and the money that is in previously approved on this worksheet is actually money that was approved under Energy Task that's Force right. that we're going to apply here, if you agree. Right. But that's what we're proposing at this mm -hmm. point. 
So I and just, how are you able to stage that over three years? It's not a forklift replacement, it's component replacements? Or it's component how does that work? Right, the, there's four air handlers and condensers within the building uh, on the outside. So there's four, they're, they're going to replace one unit each year. Okay. The condenser and the air handler, which is inside the building. So they're doing them in stages, one, at, one each year. Okay, but I guess my, my question is, um, I know Deputy and I have been <laughs> talking about this a lot, but uh, in thinking this out, would it, and we haven't spoken about this, would it be better uh, before we finally ap approve the plan to just do it all in one shot and go for the half million? Uh, but that's a question we have to ask the engineers. That yeah. makes a difference at the end yeah. of life, yeah. and you have to replace it all at once. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you put it over four yeah. years, I I don't know the answer to that, but. Uh, I don't either. We're, we're, we're police. <laughs> we're, we don't know either. And, and uh, we're relying on Sheila. She's fine. And, and <laughs> I'm not a mechanical engineer either. That's why I'm throwing the yeah. question. You know, we're out. amazed yeah. at these numbers. When we originally came three years ago, yeah. we were looking at $50,000 exactly. to, yeah. to yeah. update and to replace some of these items. And when they did the study and the engineers came back, we he showed them to me and said, what? I mean, we're, the n numbers were amazing. We went back a couple times, and I had them rework them because the numbers were just. We, I think, the building cost is 2.6 million to build. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're talking almost, a, you know, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to redo the air conditioning system. Well, what, my point is, that I don't want to go off the bond every year for a piece of this. Thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm coming from. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although you could, you could potentially bond a chunk and we, we stagger could, the construction. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. That makes yeah. some sense. Ken, Ken has a question. Yes, Ken. Yeah. General question. Uh, have we explored all possible areas of uh, federal and state subsidy for some of these items that are. I, I'm not aware of any, Ken, that there's any. So there, there was discussion savings. between Standing Building and the engineers, and, and I don't, I don't want to speak for them, and, and I know it was an issue and a question, but apparently, based upon the type of work that's being done, um, if it's not replacing one particular system with another it, what it really wasn't there weren't any grants that were were going to apply to this because it wasn't as though you're taking some particular lighting system and making it uh the more so efficient we're on our own. that's my understanding and i can review it again with standing and building to to make sure but i know they had that discussion um i'm not sure in what detail or uh, but we're not opposed to uh, doing it all at once, other than how it interferes with our, our daily operations. Yeah. And uh, we'd have to um, put it out that way. But we just asked for a five-year plan to so the, so it wasn't a big shot. I, I mean, the first I year. makes a, an excellent point. But yeah. I'm thinking more of just the appropriation we right. get at one time. And then hmm. if we have to do it in stages. Right. That's fine, but at least we have the appropriation in place is what I'm thinking. It seems like we're doing the same thing that Park and Rec went through two or three years ago because mm -hmm. they were built two or three years right. before us, and it seems like we're doing the same thing they're doing now with yeah. upgrading the whole system. That's right. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're in 16, 17. Moving forward, the only uh, in 16 uh, and 17. I'm sorry, 17 and 18, uh, the only expenditures you'll see are vehicle expenditures. So again, we're, we're projecting out the number of vehicles based on um, end of life on the vehicles. Uh, it's generally 100,000 miles. Those, num those, those numbers drop sometimes, or we might need an extra one, um, but it depends on, on personnel. Sometimes when we're down so much, we don't drive the cars as much, and therefore there's uh, uh, less mileage, and we can actually limp one lo along another year. Um, so that's our best guess at, um, you know, based on past history of mileage uh, on those vehicles, what we're going to, to need to replace both the vehicles, again, the equipment with these new cars. Um, the equipment in the Crown Vix doesn't fit in the, the new car, so some of it just needs to be completely replaced. You're talking about light bars. Um, you're talking about cages. Um, there's storage units in the back. None of it is it's interchangeable. Um, we try not to do the whole fleet at once. We try to do it like we do the cars. <coughs> we do it on the three-year cycle. Mm. Sometimes some of the stuff we can get two <laughs> sessions out of, we can get six years out of them. So now with the radar, we're trying to do the same thing. Rather than going out and buying 12 radar units to replace it, we're trying to do three years at a time. And as we get the new vehicles, because they're installed in the car, 
is to output the whole car, and that should be good for two transfers of the vehicles. Uh, question. What's the difference between the bulletproof vests and the sure. soft body armor? There's none. As a matter of fact, I was going to point out that, that 33,000 um, was moved up to 16 based on an end of life, so we can uh, take, right take that out. Um, and the reason we moved it up is because although um, the funding we get from the federal government has to be spent by August of 16, and and we can't wait that we can't procure and purchase within a month those vests and their end of life in about January, February 16. So uh, we're just moving it up, and uh, we already have the the uh, funding in place for half of it. So we're, we're already the, the, the federal government already requires us to do the paperwork now to get the funding in 16. So yeah, and that's all in place. Um, in 2019, you see, and I don't mean to pass over each vehicle, I just didn't think you wanted me to beat the vehicle issue to death. I can talk yeah. about each year if you want, but it's okay. No, um, thank you. In 2019, uh, you see the $40,000 for the AS400 server. Um, again, that's something every um, X number of years we plan to replace the AS400 I series, it's called, uh, which basically runs our, it's the guts of our, our IT system down there. And um, as most people know from IT, it ch you know, uh, the technology, the support, um, and the uh, maintenance on those things is defined uh, by a short number of years. So we usually get, uh, Chief, probably five years out of, a, out of one of those servers. And it, and it does a nice job, and it, uh, they don't break down on it. So we're purchasing that with a maintenance plan to make sure that all the information we have in our CAD systems is, uh, is not crashing on us. We also have a, when, when we replace that, we have a backup down here at Town Hall, an offsite backup. Uh, so there's a system in place for backing that up. We use the old one as just kind of a, uh, a just in case down here. Um, <clears throat> the 2020 numbers I've spoken with Sheila about right now is just uh, going to be vehicles. It's blank there, uh, but I'll touch base with her and make sure she gets the updated numbers on the vehicles. Uh, but there's no other anticipated needs other than what we've discussed there. Looking out, to probably the biggest thing you could be looking at, you know, out after 20 would be the roof on the building is getting to that point. Again, because we've been in there since 96 when the building was built. Maybe they're also working to need some, between Charlie and I, some work on that driveway. The use of the fire equipment and vehicles, heavy. The, the vehicle, you can see the driveways starting to get wear and crack. So at some point, it's got to be addressed. So as you're plan it out five, six years from now, you're going to have a couple big expenditures with the driveway and the roof. Okay. Any uh, other questions for the chiefs? Okay. Thank you, Joan. Thank, Thank you very much. Have a good day. <clears throat> well, uh, our next department, uh, library. Do you have something? Oh. Separately in the back of the book. Okay. So you have to pull them out when each department comes up. Okay. So no, even if there's one more, there more, should uh, only have been police with like a oh, test that should have come out. Okay. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. It's pretty much the same. Okay. Uh, Hello. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning. How are you? Rob, how are you? Good. 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 Your time's up. I guess you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can be really speedy. It's up to you. Okay. Um, Start speaking. Yeah. Start speaking. Okay. okay. So <laughs> you okay. notice to pull you. out the library uh, okay. section here, right? Okay. okay. Well, well, first of all, for the benefit of um, the, the town people, I'm Sandy Rua from the library, and this is my colleague Rob McCool, head of reference and adult services from the library. So thank you very much, everybody. It's nice to be here. Um, we have um, three different items to discuss. The, um, the first one is our um, ongoing technology repair and, um, should I wait a moment? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, these, these are in addition to the... There's a cover page, it's just a summary that you pages. Okay, so are we going to find one here for the library? I just don't see Yes, they're, they should be in alphabetical order. Yeah, that's the problem. You've got to go by department. Look at the second column, department. Oh, I got you. Okay. Library, got it. Thank you. Alphabetical order. Who would have thought? 
<laughs> oh, she's really very faint for making it. I know, really. Any it's coffee. early still. We need more coffee. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, All right, Kevin. I'm set. Everybody got yep. their pages? Yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so uh, we're addressing three issues, starting with the um, computer hardware and software replacement. Everybody with me? Okay. okay. Um, we've. This has been um, in place since we started, uh, since the selectmen started the capital plan. Um, I'm going to let Rob talk to the logistics of it, and then if you have any questions, we can both answer them. Uh, so the, it's really just the standard nuts and bolts hardware offered to the public and uh, to the staff. Um, at the time of the expansion, our hardware quadrupled, and that funding was provided um, through the library's um, donation. Uh, the capital we raised campaign. those funds. So this is just on an ongoing phasing out of the old hardware and replacing it with new hardware. We simply get, you know, between five and six years out of an average computer. We also get some computers replaced through our membership in Lion, which most mm. of you, we've been in that organization since 1983, and our fees for that incorporate some um, ongoing replacements. But we have a total of 50 to 60 computers in the whole library, most of them for the public and some for the staff. So this augments those computers because, as Rob said, it, it quadrupled when we re returned to this building in 2008. We also, from time to time, seek um, technology grants from the Friends of the Library, from organizations like the Guilford Fund for Education and the Guilford Foundation and their, the offshoot of the Guilford Foundation and Rotary, the um, Youth Advisory Group. So whenever we can, we get outside funds, but um, they can't carry everything that we need. All of our more interesting hardware comes from outside right. funds. And the boring hardware comes <laughs> from... <laughs> it's the essentials. <laughs> Boring hard one, okay. Um, over the, the five-year period that we're uh, looking at here, I do not see, correct me if I'm wrong, any major improvements to your building at all. Is that, that correct? Um, no, Any we have two more things that I was going to talk about here. The roof. Okay, I mean, uh, other than? No, not at this time. I mean, okay. every year that I look at it, that could change, but, okay, but that's um, what I know at this, at this moment. point. At this point, five years out, we don't see a major roof in, in Well, repair. some of these roof issues, in my mind, are major, but at, beyond that, I don't have anything. Okay. I mean, I mean 5000 a year is, to me, on a building of your size, is not a significant replacement. Um, it's, a, it's a repair. We, in, the, in the fiscal year that just ended, we yeah. had 25000 that was allocated for building maintenance, and right. we did a lot of work with that. We mm -hmm. repainted um, mainly the wooden parts of the 1933 building. We worked on um, some gutter improvements. We worked on some cupola improvements, which um, I learned more. I'm so, I feel like the police now with the HVAC. I learned more about venting cupolas than I ever <laughs> really wanted or thought I needed to know. So you got and, an education. Okay. Yes. And then we also, that was when we got involved with the maintenance of the flat roof, which I also, and the membrane, which I also didn't know too much about, but now know more about. So, okay. so these, um, the money's now going forward reflect some of um, the information that was gathered in the year that just ended. And as I noted in my justification or somewhere in there, um, we were very fortunate to have a Guilford citizen, Tom Ginns Jr. of Seal Tight Roofing, and his late father um, helped the library a lot, all gratis. He basically acted as our consultant but didn't bill us. So he was the one that kind of got us up to speed on what is what we need to do going forward. Okay. So we, we don't see anything really major in the No, I mean, years. I hope not. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. So I, I, they're, bo they're both roof issues. I just broke it into two components. One um, regarding the 1933 roof, which is extraordinary, is much is very unique compared to the rest of the roof, and it's it's the original slate, and um, it has the original copper gutters, and they need to be relined. 
And then the flat roof repair is the membrane that I talked about. It's warrantied by Carlisle, but in order to um, make sure that warranty is not void, you must use a company that has Car Carlisle certification, and there is such a company in Guilford uh, it, uh, who has done work on the school roofs for the same <coughs> reason. Um, so, you know, again, um, that's about my knowledge on the roof. I mean, I can get you more information if you, if no, you need fine. it. No, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Ken? Yeah, you're talking about uh, outside support from various groups, Rotary and others, Guilford Fund for Education and so forth. Um, could you uh, explain where this uh, average of $10,000 a year for computer hardware and software replacement is coming? It would seem that some of this could come through donation. This is what we need after our anticipated donations and, and after right. um, our anticipated monies in the operating fund and after our anticipated money from the Friends, which is also a donation but a more re so annual donation. Roughly 10000 a year is going to be needed to That's right. continue the upgrade. Right. right. Very slight variations year to year, but we try to do sure. a very regular five-year plan. That's reliable. Yes. I just have a, just again, a paperwork question, which is, I understand everything you said, 2016, it's, it's ultimately fairly modest, those things you've explained, but the detail page for the computer hardware and software, it doesn't, it says 2019, 2020. As opposed to, I'm, I'm assuming we're hearing about next year's well, request. Well, because the other um, years were, are, were already in the Previously plan, approved? So oh, you're adding on on the back end. We added right. on another year, yeah. yeah. There was no change. I see. The, very, 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 very good. Anything further from the library? Not today. <laughs> oh, that's scary. You <laughs> reserve the right to come back. No, I, I, no, I was I mean, asking them. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next. Next support we'll hear from with the uh, fire communications. Good morning. Let's get more sheets. Good morning. Yeah, get more sheets out of here. Good morning, Chief. Chief first Good morning. Commissioner Wills is in the back. Pardon? Commissioner Hi. Wilson. Oh, the chairman in the back. You want to join us? The chief. Will, <laughs> the chief will have you. <laughs> Are we ready? All right, we're ready to go. Okay. Um, we can just go over the phase two replacements of the air bottles, which is uh, I brought to your attention last year for twenty-eight thousand dollars, which is forty air bottles. Um, they've reached their life expectancy of 15 years, and they have to go by OSHA. And then we also have the fourth lease payment, I believe, right, Sheila, for $30,000 for the defibrillators that we uh, we purchased. And we reorganized the replacement of the vehicles under the five-year capital plan. Um, the, we moved the rescue back up to the 1718 more towards 1819 replacement cycle uh, and for a total of $1 million. And that's not the, just the cost of the vehicle, that's also the cost of replacing a lot of our extrication equipment, which is reaching uh, 20 some odd years old. Because um, we just roll it over to the, uh, the new truck. And then the engine's replacements were moved down um, just because of the reliability and they're in good shape. So 154 would be done in 1920, and the engine 152 would be replaced in 2021. These are all tentative and scheduled to change. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I have a question right on that. You know, I, we have the benefit of being here and, and hearing these presentations year after year and, and, and getting underneath this a little bit, but a lot of folks are going to look at this and say a million dollars for one vehicle. Yep. Can you just let everybody know really why it's a million dollars potentially? Well, that, well this the cost of the equipment that's on it, the cost of the vehicles. Well, when uh, you say equipment, well, well with the extrication equipment. equipment that that is on the thing that actually used to cut open cars and uh, uh, air systems that we use to refer our air, air bottles, air systems that we use to cut open things, saws that we use to cut open things, um, all that stuff that adds up. There, there's none of that stuff is uh, is cheap, and the cost of the new EPA regulations added almost thirty some odd thousand dollars to the. Uh, uh, to the cost of the truck. <coughs> mm -hmm. Now this this is the the heavy rescue. Yeah, but this is the gross cost of the equipment. Right. Not factoring the the sale of the old. 
Right. 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 Or right. the trade-in right. value. Right. 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 Is that correct? Okay. That's correct. A uh, question I have is you mentioned that you raised the uh, equipment uh, 200000 from your projection. The projection. Last plan. Right. Okay. Right. It, there, what's That's the reason? Well, well, the extrication equipment alone is is just about a hundred and some hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Um, some of the stuff is now. Uh, well, excuse me, was that in the, the original eight hundred no, or not? No. Okay. No, no, that was okay. just the cost of the truck. Okay. And in in doing the routine maintenance of the extrication equipment, which we have to be uh, do annually, um, the stuff is now just getting to the point where the parts are not repairable. Some of the stuff is nineteen ninety six vintage. That we just kept rolling over from the old rescue truck to the present rescue truck, mm -hmm. and we thought maybe we could roll it over one more time. It's not. And, and the other problem is the technology of the cars are have gotten to the state now where some of the standard cutters that we cover carry are not strong enough to cut open the cars. So it, by 2018, that equipment would be 22 years old. Right. Like you're saying. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And some of it could be 30 years old. Do we have to get any specialized equipment for the the electric car? I mean, mm -hmm. the more and more electric cars, and sometimes you hear. About yeah, we we have to get insulated cutters, um, which oh, is something. Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, because if you do have to cut into a an A post of the car to get somebody out of it, which today most of the stuff that we do for extrication requires cutting, because the cars are designed to crumble, and 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 the only really spreading it, they're so flimsy, but the roll cage is like a race car. So you got to cut them out, and and we had a a car up on the highway that was quite their endeavor to get it open, but we did get it. So we just need to keep ahead of the technology. Yeah, I, I was just thinking of the electric cars because I know you open the hood now and you know, yeah. you know, be careful what you touch yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Any questions about that? Any questions? Just projections. There you go. Okay. Any. Uh, uh, your question reminded me we approved like three weeks ago to sell some old. So you're going for a touchdown? <laughs> <laughs> to sell some tag. Um, and that nets to the, some of these costs. So does that net to the. Uh, I, I'm just looking at the previously approved tanker of 550. Yeah, it, it all if you, on, if you get the price you hope to get for that, does that net that number down well, a little the, bit? You know, it, that, it's A is is what is the worth of the truck by the time we get ready to retire it. Right. Um, what's the wear and tear in that truck? That happens to be the busiest truck in the fleet. And, and you know, and what the market will bear. No, I'm really talking about hit. I'm really talking about history. The, the, you, well, you history came, has been. You came in to request that, that we sell a couple of the right. 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 We, right. we did right. pretty good yesterday. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, but the market the market had to be good for that particular right. piece of apparatus. But yeah. does that net to the 550 number that I'm looking at on previously approved? Uh -huh. Previously, the, the one we just bought. Oh well, that's that's a decision up to you. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, you would, you I, I'm just trying to sort of keep track of where these numbers go because we approve 550, but we're selling. Yeah, them. What I, I did we believe get the for bids these? we got were actually better than what we okay. we authorized. So there'd be sixty-eight thousand dollars towards the nine hundred and forty-six thousand dollars that you just subtract. Okay. Yeah, that's what you want to do. Okay, so that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is that it, it, if you look at it, it is a net where we actually apply it. It may be a different table, issue, right? but it's still a net cost yeah. to you right. Right. in the right. town. Yeah. So the number, I, I, what I'm trying to get at is the numbers that we have projected are actually become somewhat less yes. because of the trade-in. Yeah. Right. Or because of the sale. Mm -hmm. or right. Bottom whatever. line. Yeah, the bottom For line the town, is, yes. is, Sheila, is how, better. How do we work that? Uh, I'm assuming that the trucks are going to be bonded. Right. So yeah. how do we do an offset against the uh, bonding costs? Well, we, it, it, it's taken um, uh, each case at a time. Sometimes we just actually apply it to revenue. Um, you know, it, 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 it depends on, uh, you know, how we feel that year. They're usually sold in a different year than they're, per than the, they're purchased. And yeah. so we usually, we've been applying it to revenue. There's been a case made that we should, you know, use it towards uh, a capital uh, requirements, future capital requirements. But right now it's case by case. That's kind of the point. Uh, that's something we all want to talk about. Mm -hmm. that, was real, that was my question. Yeah. I thought it was. Yeah. <laughs> But we can't uh, can't get rid of the truck and until the revenue until we get the new one. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah.
Yep. So other than found revenue uh, going to general <coughs> fund, if we were to earmark some of those funds for future projects, either at the fire department or elsewhere in town, uh, I think it makes an awful lot of sense to entertain that type of uh, activity. There's also the possibility of getting some grants, too. I mean, that's the other. Good. Well, the grants, I think, would offset our bonding costs. Right. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any qu other questions for the fire department before we move on to communications? Well, I got a few more things at the fire department. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just sorry. Not the five year plan, but the, um, I haven't really uh, established which year these are. Uh, we're looking to replace a vehicle at the uh, fire department. Um, excuse me. Is the our res our backup vehicles? The current vehicle that's used by the deputy fire marshal was and safety officer was the assistant chief's vehicle. That vehicle has currently ninety thousand miles on it. The next low mileage vehicle that we have that could be used if my car breaks down or if we got to go for training has one hundred sixty thousand miles on it. So we're looking to replace the deputy fire marshal's vehicle with a new vehicle. Um, an SUV type vehicle and roll that vehicle down and dispose of one or two of the other vehicles, which neither one of them are in excellent shape. One of them was b uh, bought used and, uh, and they're, in, they're in bad shape. So we need to take a look at that. So that'll be $40,000, that's including equipment. Um, again, these are estimates. So this is not, I don't have Where is this? Yeah. No. Okay. No, you got to find this, this here. Okay. okay. Right. 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 No, no, I think those are just new. No. The new, new, new capital is, thing. This is new capital. Um, the other thing that we're talking about is requesting is a, an oxygen, oxygen generator system which will make oxy, medical oxygen. The cost of that is approximately $45,000. We spend anywhere between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars a year on oxygen, and um, we rent the cylinders and that kind of stuff. This price includes buying the cylinders that we carry on the on the ambulance that uses for the main oxygen system, and yes, we start regenerating oxygen ourselves. So there should be a savings in the operating budget over time. Um, these systems have gotten to be uh, very reliable. Um, I've talked to several fire departments that have them, and there are significant cost savings over the year. So, <clears throat> what would be the life of that equipment? Um, ten years, anyways. Yeah, I, I can look into that a little bit further. Yeah, I think we would know, yeah. know that. <clears throat> so, you currently spend how much, Chief? On about the, about fifteen, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year. A year. Right. So, um, this particular piece of equipment would be forty. 40 or 45? 40, 45,000 installed. Right. So and that's including purchasing new uh, uh, cylinders because so we have to rent the cylinders from APCO right now. Okay, so the three year payback on this? Yeah. Is, am I going to understand that correctly? Right. That's correct. And then after that? I mean, that, some associated we, co cost, you know, there's quarterly testing, right. but that's like $300 a month. Um, so it's, it's so not $300 a quarter, I'm sorry. Okay. I it's a quarter. It's another $1,200. Right, so. right. Okay. okay. Okay, so we found that it's it's more expensive um, for us with the rental and the fill up every um, um, every year um, to actually go out and buy our own and have it on site and we don't have to wait for delivery we don't have to wait for any of that and we can do it right in house and it can be done by our own people so when you when you look at and it and he put down 15 you're probably on the low side um, if you do that yearly somewhere around seventeen eighteen thousand dollars you're going to end up, this will save us money in the long run. And we have it in a more timely manner. We don't have to wait. So. And and the, is, you have to have uh, <clears throat> those two additional items should be forwarded to Sheila. Yeah. I, I forwarded it to the, her office. Yeah, I, I didn't see those two. We saw two other ones that are on your, that you maybe didn't get to yet. The bit, the, okay. We can all right. all. Oh, yeah. I'll give them to you when I leave. Okay. All right. Um, the, uh, this equipment is actually generating equipment. Does it need to be separately housed? Is it, is there, is it encased? Is it protected? Uh, so are there going to be construction costs alongside the buildings? It's and it's basically, just, it just put on, on a shelf. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. that simple. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, nothing special. Nothing special. <coughs> no. 
and space is already available. Uh, the other thing that we're looking for is it's called a Lucas device. It's a automatic CPR machine. Um, basically, you strap it to the chest and you do and you do your chest. It's uh, it's fifteen thousand dollars to do that. Um, we also need to have a new fit tester, um, which is required by OSHA. Our current one is uh, 12 years old, and the re replacement cost for that is $13,000. That's used by both us and the uh, police department. Every time you put an air pack on every year, you need to uh, do a fit testing. If you want to wear uh, a respirator mask, you have to be fit tested for it. If you want to wear a gas mask, you have to be fit tested for it. This is required by by OSHA. So we need to get a new one of those. And the last one that I really have is for communications is we need to put a standalone air conditioning system downstairs for the 911 equipment. Uh, we're currently doing it with uh, a portable unit. It is not keeping it up. The, so we need to take a look at replacing that. And the tenant replacement cost on that is eight thousand dollars. Okay, that that we do have. On this right. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, the, yeah, I have the, yeah, that the we last have that two. Sheet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's okay. That's all I have. Okay. Any questions? What was that number on the CPR machine? Fifteen thousand. We, we can bring it in for a demonstration. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Ken, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, a couple of <laughs> um, well, communications and fire can go together. Okay, I'm missing building tab. Yeah, that's the one that's missing. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how much did we get on the sale of that equipment? Um, the bids we got in yesterday, we didn't yeah. sell it yet. So oh, okay. Pam has that information. That? Okay. Um, next department, Park and Recreation. Were they better than the minis? Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll yeah. Check out those numbers when it's done. Did you put the machine? I have to go through it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Rick. Good morning. Here with Rick Maynard, our uh, Park and Recreations Director. Tony Anasali, Mr. Director. Good morning. Tony. Good morning. Ralph, you got to join us? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Ralph Chapani, the uh, Chairman of uh, Park and Recreation uh, Commission. We've got a, a little bit of show, show and tell. Oh, some keep it short. That, uh, <laughs> Tony took up some of our equipment to uh, okay. pass around so you can see, look at him as we're talking about that. Okay, great. What do we hand out? You got him in? Staple. Okay, great. Yeah, some of them are two sided. Our machine was <laughs> pretty two sided until before I caught it. Um, like it's totally expensive. Too. But yeah, there's a set of um, one of our tractors and a set of uh, our truck. Okay. All right, Rick, start us off. Okay, um, I, I break it down into equipment and projects, so if, if I can do it that way, I'll start off with equipment. Any way you want. Okay. Um, so for 2015, I'm focusing on that uh, initially. Um, our first priority is the uh, F550 dump truck, and uh, those are some of the photos that I'm passing around. You'll see um, the uh, extreme rust and wear on, on those. Uh, one of them is a picture of the body, of the, tr the, the floor of the body of the truck. You see there's uh, holes in it, it's rusted. Um, there's another one that's um, it's got Tony's hand in it. That shows that's where you step into the truck, I believe. That's right? yes. Yeah, that's you see how it's rotted in. out. Um, I believe that was already in the budget for this year, but we had to change the update the price on it. Um, Public Works is recommending that we go with stainless steel bodies now, so we don't get what you're seeing on those trucks, and we'll get longer uh, life out of them. And the price because of stainless steel goes up. It's uh, it's about ninety nine thousand dollars is what um, the number we've been given. Uh, but that that <coughs> truck number 60 that we're showing you there is a 1995, so it's 20 years old, um, and uh, the cost would include a um, snow plow, a plow attachment, and sander. So that's 99,000. But I think again those pictures show why we need to replace it. The other one, the tractor, old Ford tractor, it's 1965. That tractor is 50 years old. <laughs> it's an antique. 
Ralph Schiapani was in high school when that was purchased, I think. So it's, uh, you can see how old it is. <laughs> well, we're calling Ralph an antique. <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a living legend. Rick, before we move on from the, from the dump truck, if the truck lasts 20, if this truck made it 20 years, even though that there's obviously considerable body damage, I'm not sure how much longer you're going to get out of a truck if you have a stainless steel bed. We've replaced the bed once before. Okay, and how much was that? I don't know off the top of my head. I think. I mean, I'd be curious to see the replacement yeah. cost for that versus yeah. paying for I stainless steel, which has got to be about eight thousand, I think. But Tony, you have and some so figures. So, what's the delta for the stainless steel? The amount of, of um, money that's gone into that truck is about forty thousand dollars. Okay. Since two thousand. Since since just two thousand. Just, just the bed. I'm I'm curious yeah. what the what the, ex the the cost up for the stainless steel bed versus the replacement in ten years of a standard bed. Yeah. I need to find out the price, be the difference between the steel, and I haven't found that out yet. That'd be great. That'd yeah. be great. Thanks. But, but I know Public Works is, uh, I don't know if you've talked to them yet, but I believe they're looking to go to stainless steel, and we're just trying to follow the same uh, okay. same uh, thing. So um, what, what was the, uh, refresh my memory, I'm sorry I got distracted. What was your um, original submission for that truck? I don't have that in front of me. Is it 80? Yeah, I actually have it on the, the, the third page. It's 77,000 in, in the description. You're, I think Joe, you're on the right page. It's the, it's the um, it's ninety nine and twenty ninety nine thousand dollars. Right. That's and then if you go to the left in the description, was seventy seven. Oh, I see it. Okay, sorry. Okay, so you you're so raising twenty two twenty two thousand dollars. You're adding to it for a stainless steel bed, right? Is that, well, is that strictly the cost for stainless steel? Sorry? No, well, that includes the, I don't, I don't know if we originally had the uh, plow and sander with it or not, I'm not sure. But yeah, I don't think there was a plow and sander. Yeah, so that's in there, too. So the question so is, it's not me, let's find out the cost of the yeah, stainless steel. Yeah, we would have to find Okay, yeah. Yeah. the difference. Because our last truck. Lou, that was your question, what yeah, was the cost it, it, of the stainless it, it, steel? The, la the last truck we purchased that we received last year, we, we purchased, I think, around 77000 right? Yeah. And that was without a plow, without a sander that we were using from another truck that we, we have that is still good. And that's a currently the one we're using that we've replaced um, has an old stainless steel sander on it. So our new one we want to go with, that would be um, the price increase includes a brand new plow for the truck, all the central hydraulics for it, um, a stainless steel sander, which we'll get, we'll get, you know, we can probably use it for two truck lives and, uh, and a bed. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll get we'll get the cost of the upcharge for the stainless steel. That's what we'll find okay, out. Okay, great, awesome. Good. Right. Thank you. Um, and then the, the tractor uh, again. You d that's 50 years old. You can see some of the pictures. Some rotting metal, various leaks. Um, th that doesn't owe us anything. 50 years we've had that. And uh, the the uh, one we want to replace it with is twenty-eight thousand five hundred dollars. Just to go back to the truck a minute. Uh, this truck is used all year round. Correct. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just not used uh, in the winter. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the third item on our uh, capital equipment is, is purchasing the three buses that we currently lease. We got a letter last March from the Greater New Haven Transit District, um, and we, I think we came to the Board of Selectmen at that time about mm -hmm. purchasing them, and, and Joey suggested we put it into the capital budget for mm -hmm. this year. Um, and so for the $11,360 is for three buses. I mean, that's total. Um, and we really don't have a lot of choice. Uh, Greater New Haven Transit District is no longer leasing them. They're getting out of that part of the business and uh, our options is we buy them or we have to turn them back. And I mean, really there's no option. We need those buses to transport our seniors. Um, so that's that's in there. Um, and then uh, the Sand Pro ball field groomer, it replaces a machine that's 22 years old um, and that's $21,500. And that is used uh, Five days a week from what April through about middle of October. About seven months a year, yeah. give or take. In fact, I think that's the first piece of equipment when I was here that, that we purchased. So it's it's been here about 22 years. What's the condition of that equipment? It's got it's got about three over 3,000 hours on it, and it's uh, it's in bad shape. We have two of them because we have a you know certain seasons we we do 13 ball games a day. Um, you know, five days a week. Um, slower seasons like summer, we may do two or three games a day. Um, so we, we constantly have either two out or one in reserve in case we have a problem. On um, this current one, I think, I don't have the exact year, but it's it's probably been about eight years since we've replaced a, a motor completely mm -hmm. into it. So we're on our second motor. Um, the exhaust has fallen off numerous times. It's been re-welded on. Um, so it, it's in pretty bad shape. Okay. It's in pretty bad shape. 
It's a machine that grooms the ball fields, you know, it takes yeah. care of all yeah, the clay. I, and I know that you have a feel for how much you're spending in three pairs on that I do. We have, um, just since the, our records go back with Public Works till 2000 is when we started accumulating them on the computer. And since 2000, we have a total cost with uh, parts and labor of $6,700 on that machine. Um, and a lot of that has, has come since, and I don't think that's including the motor. Um, according to Ralph, we replaced the motor before 2000, before his records indicate. In 14 years, you spent $6,000. Is that the number? Is that the number? In 14, yes. And that's not counting from 1992 to 2000. Okay. Um, any other questions? That's that's it on equipment for uh, next fiscal year. Can I go to the uh, projects then? You're gonna fix that up and uh, put it in fair play. Yeah. Probably <laughs> <laughs> oh, could. Call everyone to buy it. <laughs> they, yeah, that, that machine doesn't owe us anything. I don't think. Uh, so capital projects. Um, uh, the first one again, I think it was already in, in the budget for uh, from last year. Proof there, it's 150,000 for renovations to the uh, upper field at Cox School. We have two soccer fields there. This is the one that we call the South Field to the left, um, and that'll include um, uh, basically tearing the field up, regrading it. It's very uneven and uh, clumpy, and uh, it's just not level. Tearing it up, uh, regrading it, and installing irrigation on that field and the one to the right, the north field. So both fields will be irrigated. Those fields are used by, there are two youth soccer clubs in town now. It's used by both youth soccer clubs, youth lacrosse, uh, high school, um, girls, that's their practice field up there. Uh, and also uh, their uh, men's and women's soccer teams are playing there. So it's, it gets a lot of use by a lot of organizations. We are getting contributions for the engineering costs because we have to. Something's got to be designed to do the work up there, and um, that estimate is about twenty thousand dollars. And we're reaching out to the, all those sports organizations to contribute to that. So we're trying to get the sports groups. We already have commitment from two of them to get five thousand each. Uh, so the people using the field are going to help pay for the engineering study to uh, get the project done. Is the engineering study part of the hundred fifty thousand? It is not. It's separate. That that we want to do this year. Okay. This year, so we're raising the money for that, so that we can implement this project after July first. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and new on that uh, list is the uh, replacing the irrigation uh, enclosure and pump at Adams School for $10,000. Uh, I don't have pictures of it, but the, the uh, metal box that's there now, it's about 15 years old, that pump, the box is rotted because the pump leaks. It's been leaking for a number of years. Uh, the metal's all rotted, fatigued, um, and it just isn't working as efficiently as it should. So um, we're going to replace it with a uh, aluminum enclosure so we wouldn't have the rotting problem. Um, and that's about $10,000. And then third one is um, the Jacobs Beach shade structure. I have a, this, when we did the master plan for Jacobs Beach, Will Thompson had, uh, <laughs> can you see it all right? Yep, very well. That's the only thing left to do at Jacobs Beach. Um, and, you know, you've seen all the other things we've done out on the boardwalk and um, the, um, the uh, regraded the parking lot, the landscaping, there's some improvements to the bathhouse. And uh, we have nothing but positive feedback we've been getting from people all over the community about the improvements that have been made down there. Uh, we've seen, it just in la last year, we've seen about a 35% increase in the number of people renting the picnic shelter. Um, the number of beach passes last year went up about 20%, which we predicted this would happen as the improvements we're making there. People, are, it's, it's some of you guys know you kayak down there. You see it. I mean, it's just uh, it's a remarkable change in the way that place is looking now. This is the only thing left. Rick, is, is there been a demand for that shelter? Well, there's always people are always asking for more shade, and they like the, the fact we had the new trees down there. They like that people sit under those trees. And this was just another part of the master plan that was approved by the Parks and Recreation. I, I could remember when the master plan was presented. There was a lot of controversy about that shelter. And I think part of that, Joe, sorry to interrupt, was part of that was due to size yeah. and yeah. location. And, and I think what we're asking for, now correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, is we've basically cut this down by about 50 to 60 percent. Right. And, and, and it's going to be smaller than this. And a lot smaller than that, what you're seeing here. Yeah, and the, and the controversy was not over the plan, was the controversy was over that, that the material. Yeah, uh, what you're showing me here. 
uh, and I don't disagree with you that you guys have done a fantastic mm -hmm. job on the renovation of the beach. It looks beautiful. I mean, it, it's a, it's become quite a spot. Yeah. I congratulate you and the commission um, and everyone involved on that project. Um, I, I'm a little bit hesitant. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you to go ahead with that shelter at this point. I mean, uh, the structure, I should say. Uh, I'd like to see uh, unless, you know, I mean, I, I haven't heard that people are looking for it. So that's just my opinion. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, there was controversy about the trees, too. And, and I would and say put, do they want shade? Trees are cheaper and they, they, they look better. Yeah, bring well. Pardon? Bring a beach umbrella. <laughs> better yet, rent them. Yeah. Better yet, rent Anyway, that's that's my point. Well, some, this is the Parks and Rec Commission we wanted us to be included in our, in our uh, plan. Can I ask just a, a, the material? That, that, that is a permanent structure, essentially? It goes up in the spring and stays all year, or it just goes up for the season? It can. It can stay up. Uh, uh, Will Thompson, the way he's designed it, it could stay up, because and, and, it would stand on 130 mile And fall storm-proof? Yeah, yeah. However, if that was an issue, he would design it differently if, if Will's the one we retain to do this, uh, so it could come down. But then there's the issue of storage. Where do you keep, the, uh, where do you keep it? Um, but this... Part of the uh, cost is that the posts have to go down 35 feet into mm. the ground, um, and Will has done, um, uh, you know, soil tests there, and he's, he's gone down to wherever he got to the, I don't know what he calls it, the, the bedrock or whatever. Um, it was 35 feet, and that's that's a, that's about eighty thousand dollars of the project just just going down that far with the posts. And there's no question; it's an expensive uh, proposition. Um, <coughs> I think it, in the long run, um, I mean, it'd be a long, long run to pay it back, but. It will increase more. It's another facility we can rent out. Um, we can see, you know, there being major par uh, picnics and maybe maybe wedding receptions down there. Um, it just provides something totally new and different that is uh, very unique. It was in the original plan and the original concept. What uh, persuaded you to drop it out of the original plan? It was uh, well, money is one. Uh, it also uh, that's one that we that we dropped out. Uh, from the planning and zoning approvals. This, this has not been approved by planning and zoning yet. There are some issues with, um, at that point, I think they're grappling with um, uh, regulations about how close to the water, and I believe those have been resolved. Um, and, uh, and yes, there was some, some controversy from people in the neighborhood there about the uh, you know, possibly blocking the view of the water. Yeah, if I could just make a comment, I was on planning and zoning at the time of the controversy and so forth. And I would say that the majority of the people that came that did not live on that one street were very supportive. And there are many individuals that indicated they wanted some shade. I mean, if you're, you know, you're an older person, you have your grandkids there, you don't want to be exposed to the, the sun. You want to be down by the water, read a book, whatever, but you don't want to be uh, on, um, directly in the sunlight. The people, basically, uh, that created all the consternation is about five individuals. And, um, and they all live there. And most of it had to do, I think, with selfish reasons because it was blocking their view of the water. Mm -hmm. But it's not their park. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's, the, it's the town of Guilford's park, and the most residents want a place to go where they yeah. can enjoy the water and not be exposed to the sun. Sure. And, and I have to say that, that you know, some of those individuals were against the idea of the trees down there. Cause same, same reason if I might block the view of the water. No, and three of them since this has gone up, have come to me and said, the trees look good. Yeah. And there are people who, they were, I, you know, I understand. They were concerned that it was going to be, um, but I saw 33 <laughs> trees on the, on the, the map that it, thought it was going to look like the green. We have trees all over the place. And, and the, the net increase was really only 16 trees. There were some trees that were dying that we took out. And I think now they've seen that they, they provide shade. They're not blocking any view. And, and they've actually think it looks nice. I'm, I'm very impressed with the park, by the way. I, I drive down there quite frequently. As a matter of fact, I was there this morning. It was very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it came out good. You, as I recall in the discussions, uh, I, I support uh, the shade structure. And I was convinced in the earlier presentations. The intention here was this is, not, this is more than a beach. Correct. This is a park. Right. OK? So if. The, the arguments about, well, if you're going to the beach, you're going down for the sun. That's not necessarily the case. What you're trying to build is a multi-use destination mm -hmm. down there, exactly. as I recall from the original uh, proposal and projections. 
and that's what we—that's basically what we told the voters we were going to do, uh, or the, the, the taxpayers we were going to do. Um, in terms of the size and the view, that, you know, that's that's not my purview, mm -hmm. but I strongly support multi-use facilities in this community. Had we had the same thinking here, we wouldn't be using that uh, that area for Camp Manuncatuck. Right. We wouldn't have built a shade structure mm -hmm. for Camp Manuncatuck. We wouldn't have put a basketball court in over there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you're doing currently over there. It looks like you're grading a field to try to create a, a more level playground right. for, for, for young kids to play on. Right. Same argument would have been made. We wouldn't have a playground down there. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I support the concept of a multi-use facility. And as Peter said, there is a group of folks who go to the beach not to get suntans and sunburns and possibly to avoid skin cancer. Right. Um, so again, I, I support the idea of a multi-use facility and I think the shade structure is is good. I'm a little concerned about the price, $380,000 for some posts I, and I some think we, fabric. We, we can probably look for some grants, which we haven't do, done that yet, but I think we would, we, if this were approved, I think we would look to see if we can find some grants to help out with it. Yeah. I also think we model. need another rendition. Uh, did, these good. graphics Scoop. are from the original presentation. Correct. Yeah, and right. you said they're the new plan is approximately half the size. Yeah, I think it's thirty percent, thirty percent smaller. Yeah, yeah. So I, we can, I, yeah, and you have to go back through all of the permitting process sure. of P and Z, so there would be opportunity for yeah. public hearings again and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But yet you're throwing out a figure that, to me, is still on the original size. Um, Will Thompson, help me with those numbers, and I, I believe it was based on the smaller size. Well, um, wait a minute. Will Thompson's numbers were what we went Original. on before and included that structure. We had to scale it down because it didn't meet the grant that we got, and that's why that, that's not in there, forgetting about the controversy about the structure, correct? Well, you know, I think, well, Yes, but also because well, of the controversy, right. we took it out. It, it, well, because we couldn't afford it, too. So you're coming in here with a, with a number that I'm not comfortable with whether I agree with the structure or not. So I, I, before this board is going to address going out for bonding for a number like that, and it isn't, I see Sheila put it in a proposed bonding resolution, almost $400,000. I could think of better uses. I, I, I disagree with my colleagues here. I could think of better uses for four hundred thousand dollars. But if I would I'm outvoted, want to know whether it's a correct number. Yeah, I mean, if, if I'm outvoted and, and and we go ahead with it, I want to make sure it's a good number. Yeah, well, I, I can have, ask Will tweak it, but these are numbers that, that I got from you. Because him. this that's almost what we paid for the entire re renovation. Correct. Am I correct? Yes, that was our so half million dollars. dollars. Yeah, but what we have down there, which is a very, like I said before, it's a fantastic project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Uh, but this is obviously a significant item, and, and and there's a lot of strong opinions, and I, I kind of come down with Joe on this, frankly, as well. I mean, I hear everything everyone has said, and it is the project to date has been terrific. The the the, the value that we got for the work that's yeah. down there is fantastic uh, and it's a definite improvement in clearing out the invasive plants I mean there's many many small high value things that 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 you've done and the work has been tremendous um, but I think it's already a multi-use park as Matt has already laid out I mean I think we do have a, a, a good vision for what goes on down there and Park and Rec has done a wonderful job to keep it available to everybody and I just don't think the increment this is just for the for the additional utility that we would get out of this structure, there's many other lower cost ways, trees, smaller individual umbrellas, there's just so many ways of solving that problem that don't involve putting this giant, to me, high risk piece of structure that one hurricane, I, I'd be surprised to see this survive some of the storms we've had over the last five years. It just, to me, it's, it's, a, it's a high risk, low reward opportunity and I, I just wouldn't be in favor of it. As a shade factor, in, in going back to Will and getting new numbers or, cor or verifying that they're correct numbers, I mean, it almost seems like this was a, a design feature as much as it was a shade feature. It'd be interesting to see if shade is that important. 
uh, the cost comparison of this design feature compared to just another pavilion like down there. I mean, the pavilions aren't bad looking, uh, but I can appreciate this as you know, nice. a monument. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I think what we have to do is go in and, based on size reduction and what what the what the current plan is for the shade structure, is to get at least at a minimum an updated cost. Mm -hmm. I like truly the three hundred graphics too because yep. those are yeah. the old ones and yep. those are the ones that created yep. the controversies. Right. Okay. We, we, I go say the whole say. issue. Is there a, probably a, on a different venue a review by a fresh whoever start. wants to look yeah. at it? Uh, the selectmen, board members, everybody. They, you ought to make a full presentation. We ought to designate a time to look at that. Mm -hmm. with, right. Possibly with Will, possibly with new ideas, mm -hmm. possibly with your commission. I, I suggest we move on in the time if everybody's okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. Well, we expect that that might, <laughs> might be a little discussion on that one. <laughs> Uh, I think that that's it for next year. Uh, do you want to look into the into the future? Maybe you can briefly go through any major items uh, in the rest of the four years on this plan that we should be aware of. Okay. Well, I guess again, looking at the equipment, um, just trucks trucks that are going to be 15, 20 years old that we're replacing. Uh, 16, 17 um, truck will be. Uh, yeah, about 15 years old. It's, it's another one that's the, the bodies are all of our trucks. The bodies are riding on them. all of them are, and uh, we have to get into a better replacement plan. Um, that, that's major. Um, and then we have an, another dump truck replacing another one in 2018, which would be again 15 years old. Um, another a mower, small uh, six foot mower to replace for 26,000. Um, and our large Jacobson mower we have in 2018-19. Uh, we just purchased one. Uh, this past, was it this fall we got it, Tony, I think, or mm -hmm. summer? Um, but the other one, at that point, will be 15 years old. Uh, we got it in 2004, so that's in there for 120000 And then um, uh, kind of more smaller ticket items uh, in 2019-20. We do have uh, one of the buses. At that point, we want to replace. It'll be uh, about 12, 13 years old. Um, and then smaller things like a trailer for $6,000 and an aerator for 9000 I see also in here that we're approaching in 2019 the replacement of the turf field at the high school. Yes, it'll be uh, about 14, 14, 15 years old by then. It's, it's a, there's an eight, eight year warranty on the carpet. We uh, always hoped we'd get close to 12 years on it, and so by that point, it's got to be replaced. I think uh, we put a note in here, though, at the last commission meeting. They suggested that we try to share that cost with the Board of Ed so that the town side isn't funding mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The but position uh, there, Joe, that the, from the commission perspective is that that field's usage is over 60, 70 percent by the high school, be yeah. it lacrosse, soccer, yeah. and everything well, else. And I did, we were concerned about park and rec picking up that whole fee as well, right. and we think that expense should be Good. shared. We yes. A, a new high school that's going to be operative in a year or so, they're going to do something with fields. Mm -hmm. Would that argue in favor of advancing the the date for the replacement of the synthetic field? And if so, haven't there been uh, some very uh, major changes in the composition of synthetic fields in the last few years since we install the original one that should be addressed? Some changes. The company that, that uh, this field was purchased by uh, through uh, Field Turf, there, 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 there aren't a lot of major changes there. There's some, been some discussion about the crumb rubber, uh, some news articles about that. Um, our field was tested independently uh, to make sure there was no uh, cancer issues with it. There aren't. We, they tested the water coming off of it. They tested the, uh, the air quality uh, during real hot days you know, in, in July. Um, and it was, uh, the report that we got was that there were, there were no issues on our field for any of those uh, cancer-causing uh, things that you've seen on the news sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it would be, uh, I don't think it would be included with the, what's going on with the high school now. They, I mean, they are going to be do, building some new fields at the high school um, in, I guess, another two years with the current um, uh, student parking is. Two new fields are going in up there. That's part of the high school project. Um, you know, whether they tie this into that, I, I don't know. I guess we, we have to find out. But I did have a conversation with Dr. Freeman 
and he was not against the idea of the, the school budget helping pay for half of this. Um, the other thing, in, in that 2017-18, uh, uh, we have, uh, this is something new, resurfacing the skate park. Um, we have some major, major cracks up there right now. Skate park is getting more use, uh, there's, you know, it's kind of, it's a little bit cyclical. There are groups of kids, when we first built that thing in, I think, 2004, I believe it was, um, we were getting 100 kids on a weekend there. It, it went down, it's up, it's not, I wouldn't say we're getting 100 now, but there was a steady group of people that aren't using it. I go up there periodically and see them. But the biggest expansion is that we have, we have pickleball now for the seniors, which is getting huge. I mean, we have 40, 50 people, seniors, now wanting to play pickleball. And so we have now, we have two pickleball courts at the skate park. Mm -hmm. On the back side of the skate park, we, we created two pickleball courts. And it's kind of great having the seniors up there playing pickleball while kids are skateboarding. Sometimes at the same time, so it's kind of intergenerational. What is pickleball? It's kind of like a combination of uh, tennis and, and badminton, sort of. The, the racket is more like a big uh, ping pong paddle. It's a wiffle ball. They hit it over a net that's a little bit smaller. It's a smaller court than a tennis court. But um, we, we got people in their 80s. They're playing. There's a, uh, a, a feature story on the in the Shoreline Times today about that. How oh, is it? I, I got to read it when I go home because I didn't know what pickleball was either. <laughs> you got to come down to the community center. They, they play hot. in the big room at the community center too. And so, in, in the, the area where the pickleball court is too has some major cracks. So, um, I met with a couple different companies. This this, this post tension concrete. They say you can lay it right over the top of the existing asphalt and you don't have to grind up the asphalt they, they claim in the last 20 30 years that you know it's concrete and it's a better way to go um, so I, I think in the long run it's probably less expensive going that way because otherwise we'd have to grind up what's there because of the amount of cracks and just basically rebuild the whole thing this can go right over the top of it so that's in 1718 um, I think that's oh the community center roof we have in for 16 17 that, that I think was already in our five-year plan um, and that we still want to do that, not next fiscal year, but the year after. We, in fact, it's just rain we just had the other day. We have leaks in, in the exercise room. And every time we get a heavy rain, we get leaks in there. And so we have a roof contractor that, that's going to come in and just do some patching to get us through. I don't want to do a lot of expense since we're planning on re replacing that roof in a couple of years. But um, we think we can do some patching to at least stop the leak for now. But at that point, it's going to be um, almost 30 years old. Should we be waiting that long? I think we're okay because the rest of the building is okay. It's just that one area we're having a major, pro not major, we're having a problem with. And we think, we're going to try the patching. And if that doesn't work, we may have to push it up a year. But we think we'll be all right. Okay. Has Steve been involved in that? I see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The asphalt shingles themselves are in a bad shape. Uh huh. It's more a flashing issue. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Anything else? I think we're good. Well, yes. Uh, Anybody? Other than worrying about where dogs are going to swim, nothing. I, I don't want to get that. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. About a half hour behind, but that's okay. Now, pickleball can get you ready to retire and move to Florida because it's big down. Yeah. All right. Our next uh, department is Public Works Engineering. Yeah, why don't we take a two minute break? Oh. Mike, would I have to change the tape at all? <laughs> You'll wait till I have to He's say something. Yeah, right. <laughs> You'll have to change the tape. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, we're back. We'll uh, we'll change the schedule here. We'll take uh, Joe Dunsmore from the Guilford Lakes Golf Course. Joe. Hi there. How are Hi, you? Good. We're here for a. I guess a continuation of our plan, our two-year plan. Uh, next year we're planning to do two tees, uh, which is number four and number one. We had completed three tees uh, this past year with the capital uh, plan, uh, being um, eight, five, and six. 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 Yeah. Right. I gotta get, gotta go down the numbers here, around the around the loop. And uh, we were on the budget. We did find out we do need one other things, which we uh, are going to, we're out to bid or looking for bids for some drainage. And uh, other than that, we are also looking for, I guess, another piece of capital equipment, 
which is the sprayer, which is a unit of the tank, as well as the uh, the truck that ha uh, houses the uh, the sprayer. And I think that one is for thirty-four thousand, if I recall, and the other ones, uh, the piece of equipment's around uh, thirty thousand twenty-nine something. And this was the bid that we got about a year and a half ago, so there may be a couple dollars more as everything goes up. Okay. Any, any questions? Joe, did, uh, will that be all of the T's that have been re rebuilt over the past several years? It would be five T's, a total of five T's. So we had a couple other T's made uh, that were fixed during the, uh, the past couple of years. Right. And, but this will be the, the finish. We had seven, nine. Yeah, two. Two. And two. two. While right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. So this, 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 will, this will be the complete of all the T's that have been uh, completed. Good. Okay. okay. And it looks nice for those who uh, have seen it and play golf or go buy it. It's in, and we are going to reopen uh, with the tees in, in the springtime, first day. That will hold us for five years. It will hold us for five years. I hope it's more than five years. <laughs> okay. I hope it's, but all the tees will be uh, complete. Any questions? Joe, is the reason why two tees in 16 is more than three tees? Uh, right. Okay. Well, number four is um, a major t, t replacement. We're going to move it because it's uh, right next to a ledge and keeps on taking the soil away. So we're going to move it uh, about uh, 50 feet away and put some drainage there. But there also will be a lot more fill because we're going to try to get it up. Okay. And that's the reason for that expense. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. And are you making it uh, a larger T, longer T? A lot, a lot, um, a lot. All the tees, if you've seen, we have made uh, larger to uh, accommodate the, the play, okay? And that was the major problem why these other tees were being beat up. Uh, so this will be a wider as well as longer tee. And we'll be back where number two is at. That's where we're going to start from that. It'll be more of an angle coming in from that standpoint. And that's the reason we're trying to take the way, move it away from the ledge, ledge right. which erodes the, uh, the box. Yeah. And, and the landing zone for the third green. Right, right, right. <laughs> Not that I've ever pushed it right. But no, 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 I, I understand that. No, we never do that. <laughs> right. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks, Joe. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Right. For accommodating. Okay, no problem. Right. Want to keep you healthy here. That's right. Okay. Yeah. All right, and uh, engineering, public works. Thanks, guys, for. Uh, well, I'd like to point out the reason they're under budget is because public works for the lives of the truck. trucks. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Public works always so helps out. Okay. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to point out that uh, representing Engineering Public Works is our engineering uh, director, town engineer, Jim Portley, and our director of uh, supervisor of highways, uh, Tom Filion. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Glad to be here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I'm supposed to say on TV? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Um, I think the easiest thing to go over the equipment, you are all pretty knowledgeable about the, the equipment we replaced in the last few years, and the, the, it's really much appreciated. Uh, it's starting to uh, really replacing a lot of this, this old, material, old trucks. We're going to be uh, getting of this next year, hopefully, with, with uh, finish up the, the kind of replacement of all our, our trucks and uh, our major equipment, with the exception of the following year. We're still going to a little bit something extra. Uh, but next year, um, we have uh, approved, uh, previously approved, two a replacement of two pickup trucks uh, for 1999 and 1992. Uh, they would be at $43,000 each. Uh, AC grader, which is a vehicle we use for uh, um, grading dirt roads and other other functions as we construct roads. And there was a, a six-wheel uh, dump truck that we had pushed out a year um, because of other needs. That would be uh, uh, replaced in 1985. Uh, was it back? That's a Mac, Mac. Yeah, six speed Mac. Uh, it's in your your chart here. It shows that it's a 217, but we really actually need that in 216. And that was slated to be 
replaced last year, but because of uh, the needs of the department for a, a good sized chipper, uh, based on the, the last few years of, of storms, and uh, we needed to move that item up, and we moved also a pickup truck, a um, <coughs> six wheel pickup truck for plowing down along the shore. They were moved up this year, and this this uh, this dump truck was pushed off a year. But we would like that to be in a, in, night, in the 2016 column. So that would cover the equipment uh, needs for the department in 216. Um, in 216, we also would start in in terms of our uh, uh, road construction. We are working under right now a, a bond issue for the coastal roads. We rebuilt Old Quarry this year. And in the spring, or maybe even late winter, we're going to do Chaffin Island and Tuttle's Point. Those those were identified uh, a number of years ago as uh, something that roads we have to elevate to uh, prevent flooding. Um, but we would like, and this base goes on discussions uh, last year, start working on the inland roads. Uh, we have uh, one million one hundred forty thousand dollars that was identified last year. Um, that is going to be. Uh, directed towards, and we have a priority list of roads that we, we can go over if you'd like, uh, that we can start spending that on. Um, but that also includes that sidewalk that was a, a matter of a petition we received from the people up on State Street on the sidewalk to go from St. James Hollow further north to the intersection of State and Nut Plains and uh, Little Meadow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's a, you know, a lot of people in there, so there was a petition received to extend the sidewalk up on the along along uh, State Street to provide an opportunity for kids in that area to walk to Adams School and uh, for the, everybody else to provide walking along that very heavily traveled section of road. So that would be part of that. That would be uh, has to be designed yet, but you know we have an estimate about $140,000 for that. Um, the Vineyard Point Road Bridge actually was. Uh, was slated for this coming year, but because of uh, concerns raised by the DOT, we moved that project ahead. Um, we did receive uh, a grant from uh, the state uh, for partial funding of that. Uh, that was under the uh, local bridge program, and those numbers have to be uh, worked out yet, but that is a, is a project we've already completed, virtually completed, with mm -hmm. some, some minor punch work item that we have to do, but that, that job is done, um, and that money would come out of LOSA. We have the, that money slated for that. Um, let's see, also this year we were going to, we have uh, proposed a pavement overlay for Palmview Circle. That was a commitment the Board of Selectmen made to the residents up there. Uh, that's for $60,000. Falcon Road retaining wall, that has been inserted. There's a, a section of Falcon Road that was undermined by uh, uh, wave action from Irene and Sandy. Um, that whole section of road, if you've been down to Falcon Road, we, we, we installed uh, highway barriers along the, the water side of the road to prevent people from getting too close to the edge because it's been undermined by wave action. So we put an application into FEMA when it was uh, when that happened, because there was no historical data on what what actually supported the road there, and you know it was anybody's guess. It was all covered with vegetation and trees and everything else. But my belief is it was just a, like a, a stone retaining wall um, that's lost, and you see just a cavity under the side of the road right now. Not not to the point where it goes under the pavement, but it's right adjacent. So we, we've lost lateral support to that road. Mm -hmm. So what we've designed is a, a, a retaining wall that we would drill into the, the bedrock, put a footing in, then build a wall, and then fill behind it to give, this, give us that lateral support. We have a, an estimate of that, about $250,000. Uh, in discussing it with, with the first selectman, we were going to use the, uh, the money in the, uh, the bond issue for shoreline roads until we get a final determination from uh, FEMA. And we still have that, that ore in the water. We still want to pursue that, that funding, and hopefully we will get it. Um, that would be done, done this year. We have a replacement of this year, too, for uh, uh, Great Hill Road. Um, just 
west of the intersection of Great Hill Road and Route 77. There's uh, an old 3 by 8 culvert that's virtually been eaten away through the years by salts and, and just scouring from the hillside above. It's, it's, it's come, finally come to the top. We've identified it for years as a project we have to do. And we would propose to do that again. We would use low SIP funding for that, for that project. That's $350,000. Um, we w wanted to, uh, down at the, the uh, that, that pretty much covers our, our road construction projects. Um, we would want to do, uh, uh, replace the, sand, the sanders that we carry in the back of our, our dump trucks. Uh, we have racks that were built 20 something years ago. They're, we use old uh, telephone poles that we had uh, scavenged from the uh, uh, SNET and AT&T and anybody else we can get them from. We built them, yes. <laughs> we got coffee mugs to go with them. Uh, and, uh, but they're no longer available. Uh, the uh, utility companies aren't, they're, they're so concerned about the creosote and the other materials that we use to treat these poles, they don't want to give them out anymore. So we, we don't have them available to us. So we put in uh, money in here for uh, basically a steel, like a, a metal, steel metal building kind of bent. It's just a, just basically a, a 14 by 14 uh, cross section with, with beams so we can hang these, uh, hang these sanders from during the, during the summer when they're not being used. And no sense building a building, you just keep them out of the weather so they don't rust mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, that's for $25,000. Uh, we continue our sidewalk program at, at, at $75,000. Uh, that's something that's an ongoing and it's been very fruitful for us and very well received. And uh, then we have a, a standing request for specialized drainage projects. We're starting one right now down at Howard Drive uh, at River Street. And uh, these projects come up, people uh, contact us. Some, these, some of these lists are quite long about we just haven't had money over the years to deal with this. And we instituted this about three years ago, and it's worked out very well. <coughs> People are very pleased with it. So that's, that's the background. Uh, I want to bring you up to date on, uh, you know, we, we just got authorization from uh, DOT to put out to bid uh, a project for Westlake Avenue, which is a mill and overlay project. It's about a $1 million three. Uh, it's no, no town money at all. It's uh, complete. Uh, Funding by lots, so of, lots of program, yep. and Long Hill Road, which is on this list going forever and ever, uh, is is nearing final design completion. Uh, I would expect uh, in the spring or early summer to go out to bid on that reconstruction of Long Hill, starting at Route One, going up to Hubbard Road. It's a it's a major job. It's, it's I think our portion as the last estimate, Joe. I think our 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 commitment uh, is ten percent of our funding is is uh, 310,000. We've earmarked more than that in the past. I think we have $350,000 as I recall in, in this, so we should have enough money. We, we did use 50,000 of, of the, uh, of the uh, dedicated road fund to pay for our portion of the design fee. So that, 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 was, that was, again, we parlayed that into, uh, into it's a good, good use. design, very good use. We, yeah. we do use it. <laughs> I, I think what you'll see as you go through here is we have done a pretty good job in uh, refurbishing our fleet and, and now the concentration going forward is to refurbish or reconstruct our infrastructure which is kind of long overdue and that I would like to see the emphasis going forward when I say infrastructure I'm talking about roads, bridges, walls, sidewalks. And I've told Jim and Tom that's what we have to look forward to. I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. We've pretty much from a building perspective, once we complete the high school, you know, you know uh, and the renovations here, the police department, the fire department, we're, we're in good shape. So yep. I think infrastructure is now all yep. about roads. Uh, and particularly, um, if you were at the uh, Coastal Resilience uh, presentation the other night, uh, we have to pay more attention to our coastal roads, which we have been doing, uh, but we can't forget our properties north of uh, 80 either. Exactly. That's, that's what we're doing. Of so. this uh, total on road reconstruction, which seems to be slightly under, you're asking slightly under 3 million for this year, maybe uh, two, two well, eight. 
uh, how much of how much of that that figure can be reduced by grants and support? Um, you, you've mentioned LOSIP, you've mentioned FEMA. Depends on what's available. You know what, I think if I can interject that some of the, the, these figures are actually just our costs and that I really would like to see us put in the, the state or federal costs to really show you the total cost of the project. Like for example, mm -hmm. on the, on the um, one for 350 for Long Hill, it's really a much bigger project than that. Yeah. So it's a three million one hundred thousand dollar project. Yeah. We've already re this, this is just our our cost. Our cost. The, the, yeah. the, the project is much bigger. So if you saw that, you would see that you know. There are reductions built in. Yes. We're, we're getting money from other sources. And you know we try to make every take every opportunity to make application for grants. That's why you know, I think Joe will tell you we were the first one to get approval on a lot lots of grant first Good. community and the, the we are way ahead in terms of funding for Guilford for the size uh, that's available. Um, I think we got every, I think thanks to Sheila, we got as much as we could with the, uh, um, in the money. And yeah, uh, under the LATSA program, the, the region, which is the South Central um, region, which includes 15 towns, uh, there was only $7.5 million, a lot of the 15 towns. And, we got the first piece of it, mm -hmm. which was the Westlake Avenue. Us and Wallingford were the first two towns. Yeah. It's not a lot of money when you consider 15 towns and the cost of uh, road reconstruction is pretty expensive. Yeah. Well, that's only one of several plans that the state has, right? Yeah. Of money right. Well, this is the lots of they've changed it. What happens is that the the, the state, and Jim can explain it better than I can, is that the state has taken the federal money and said, you know, we'll fund it, meaning the state, and we'll take the federal money and created another bureaucracy, right, James? It's another bond issue we're going to, yeah. to pay back later. Right. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, in all truth, it's, it's, it's the state's needs for roads are, are dramatic, too. Yeah. You can yeah. see it. I mean, they, uh, and they, one of the issues that We've gone around and around the department mm -hmm. with this use of salts. There's going to be a, have to be a change in attitude in terms of use of salts for for road for clearing roads in the winter time. Our bridges are getting eaten up. Our, our equipment is getting eaten up, and it's all because people want to maintain that convenience to be able to drive on a black pavement any time there's snow. No, I, I, I think those people up in Buffalo would be happy to have anything. Worry <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. yeah. about it. Yeah. I see black pigeons. I think I see yeah. black pigeons. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. I mean, it's, 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 and you just, it's you become just quite, a, quite a dilemma for, for removing snow and ice that we all want. Like Jim said, we all want a quick removal of snow and ice and so we can have safe travel. But it's really deteriorating our roads at an accelerated rate. And equipment. And equipment. And equipment. Like equipment. you heard from Park and Rec. And one of the things that we discussed at the uh, Public Works Commission the other, the other night was in, in, I have it in here someplace, uh, money for a wash bay. And we would hope to have it not this year, but next year. We have to go through a design. A lot of the uh, Public Works Commissions have built wash bays as part of their facility so that after a storm, you can take the truck and wash it thoroughly. We, we, we do it outside, which is... Uh, questionable, uh, but we do a great job in, in c catching all the sediments. Um, <laughs> but uh, w realistically, we should have a wash bay so that we can get get every part of the truck because that salt gets into everything. I and mean, you, you wouldn't believe when we take when we mm -hmm. wash them. Yeah. And right now, the guys are up in a loader in a cage and with a with a fire hose. I mean, it's. Pretty gruesome when you get some of these real bad storms, but it's we, it's what we have to do to maintain the equipment. We really do need a, a, a facility, and all, Tom and I have discussed it a number of, number of times. What we'd like to do is maybe add it the, the far end of what is the cold storage building at the, the building that goes uh, easterly from the public works building, and build a bay at the end of that. And wouldn't even it wouldn't even need a full structure. Exactly. If if we did invest in a in a truck wash, what we want to call it. Would we still need um, stainless steel beds? 
I think if you want to, the, the, the corrosiveness of this, this material, as long as that's going to be part of the, what we use for uh, snow removal and, and keeping roads clear, we would. I think it's a, it's a wise investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing it I seems would, to be a trend in the industry, all the state trucks now. Yeah. And it's not that big a uh, cost of increase. Yeah. increase no. and, the, yeah. and the quality of the steel is deteriorating now. Yeah, you don't even know where it's coming from at the time. Yeah. But uh, the other thing is, if we've designed it, and I think you may not hear about it much from the fire department, but they have the same issue. You know, uh, if we could build it something that would also let let them wash their vehicles on us, because they're out in the road, they're they're responding, they're responding on roads that state roads have plenty of salt. Yeah, they're always up That's, on the interstate. They're, they're gonna. Yeah. That's going to show and start reflecting. Was uh, Carl yeah. Pearson was yeah. talking yeah. about uh, last year? He was called on emergency basis for some one weekend to replace a tank. Mm -hmm. and he got under one of the fire trucks and he says it's the corrosion under there is, and there's, there's no way to wash them. You know, no, so so a wash bay would have to attack that from, all sides. from all sides. Yeah. So What's that, that that's number again? About a half million dollars. It, is there? No some possibility of doing it on a regional basis. Cars. Do do some of our neighboring towns have municipal Well, North Brantford has one, but I will tell you, after a storm, you got all these other things going on. To drive up to North Brantford on the state road, <coughs> even if you could get their permission, <coughs> right. I mean, that, yeah, you're coming back, I, I don't know if they would. The best thing to do is wash them and put them into a, a garage. Uh, <sighs> Madison would be an obvious choice. They would be, an, they would be the closest. Our, you know, defer some of our costs by allowing them to use it. You can put a mm. meter out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I don't know. Anyway. I mean, it's probably it's worth it. They, I know their site doesn't, wouldn't allow it. It's a pretty right. small site. Right. And, uh, it's, you know, it's worth the discussion. Sure it is. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Could it make because they have sense to build it on the transfer site, huh? transfer station site. Thank you. Uh, you said you got to bring them back to the garage. Yeah, I, I, I always don't, wanted I don't, the good. Well, I just think a regional one. I mean, thinking it that's shows good leadership. It shows good, good, good focus on everybody's role. It's always, there. it's always a pleasure <laughs> to come here good. as invited guests. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Thank appreciate thank you. it. Anything else, guys? Oh, yeah. I, I have a couple things. <laughs> don't don't leave too quick. Down uh, when we talked about uh, down Falcon Road, there is also mm -hmm. and just so you you know what I'm going to be doing, uh, there are repairs that we did on the uh, pedestrian bridge at, at Station Head this year because some of the steel, the Core 10, which was a, a steel that was designed to to stand up and have self protection with with uh, the uh, as it rusted and built, it's supposed to coat the steel. Well, we had some, some members uh, rot out and we, we replaced them this year, which is not a problem. But in, in doing a further investigation, we found that uh, there's going to be some more substantial repairs necessary. And when we installed that bridge, the Sanctum Head Association paid for the bridge and the town provided the, the, the equipment and the manpower to actually build the abutments and everything else and, and the footings. I was going to write, so you, you'll probably hear from them, uh, to give them an estimate of what it would take to repair for the materials. Again, we will do the work, but it's my suggestion that you know this is something that if the bridge is primarily used by the residents of, of St. Jim's Edge, and we don't want to turn our back on them, but it, it does need uh, some repairs. We've got about a couple of thousand dollars in steel, and then one new decking for the, the structure itself. So that's going to be something I w I'm going to direct a letter to them so that you know that. Kind of, kind of which, which bridge is this? That pedestrian bridge. It goes from oh, okay. Prospect okay. over yep. to Colonial. Yep. 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 All right. yep. Okay. So, anything else? Anything else on the board? Gary? Right. You know I, I, you know, I would just make a comment. You know, we talked about equipment replacement. This, and this isn't just an engineering issue, but the equipment replacement and then looking at infrastructure replacement. Um, Matt's here too. I think this is a, an issue for both boards. I'd like to see us to start to develop a reserve so that we're not seeing replacement of condensers, replacement of roofs, going into into new bond issues. I mean, I think we bond new uh, new buildings. I think we bond certain major projects. But I, I'd like to be able to develop a reserve so that these relatively smaller issues of maintenance of the buildings uh, are covered. 
uh, out of a reserve rather than having to come back and bond periodically. Yeah, I agree. It's always desirable to, it, it is less desirable to bond programs mm -hmm. and activities that don't have a usable life of 20 years. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. However, the size of some of those projects dictates that we have to go to bond. But I agree with you. And we talked a little earlier here about, uh, you know, if we're selling some fire equipment, maybe that's some seed money uh, to, to, to setting up uh, a capital reserve account. Well, I think also as we have been building up our undesignated fund over the last five years, right. we get to a point that our, maybe a surplus is all portion of it um, should then be put into a designated reserve. I agree. Right. I agree. That, I that think that point. it makes it more sense to have an appropriation yeah. in your in your each budget year that each then would go year. to right. the uh, right. designated right. reserve. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I agree. And uh, you know, I mean, like we did this year to so offset the, the deficit health in health the uh, internal service fund for medical medical members. Yeah. So exactly. We, we could do that too. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, the interesting part, too, is the bidding war will start among the departments to get access to that. I know. <laughs> okay. That's been the issue. All right. Uh, town Properties, Steve Nightoff. How you doing, Steve? Good. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Yeah, it's still morning. We can keep going. I think so. All right, Steve. Adding hopefully six new projects to this capital fund. Um, town Properties. I'd like to repave the Town Hall, Town Hall South parking lot. Um, over at Friends of the Library, the old daycare, require, it needs a new roof. Um, we removed the balcony a year and a half ago because it was rotted. So for safety reasons, we removed it. And the back set of stairs on it is uh, deteriorating. So just to keep that building up. Which, which building are we talking about? Friends of the Library. Right it's been the library. daycare center. Oh, the, day, the old yeah. daycare. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we had some debate about about what it's called familiar. and the address okay. and everything okay. else. Okay. Um, we're going to start getting into sprinkler head replacements at Public Works and the Public Works storage area. Also here, I'd like to replace some of the fencing behind Town Hall, Town Hall South. Okay. And uh, septic pumps at the Town Hall. Okay. So Steve, I think that we talked about possibly taking the parking lot uh, repavement and moving it out to 17, is that right? Or we could even move it out further. Okay, but 16 is probably not realistic no, at this no, point. Okay. No. Yeah, I, I was, that was at, five. Oh, we thought yeah, I was thinking 2019 for that. Yeah, that's okay. The parking lot is starting to look a little shabby though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to get another four or five. And at some there. point. Uh, it doesn't have to be the next couple of years, but we've done a lot of patching to the sidewalk around Town Hall. Yes. At some point, we've got to redo it. It's, well, you guys did a good job safety-wise, right. but aesthetically, it looks kind of... Right. That's yeah. in that number for that's in that number. asphalt. So that's in that... Yeah, yes. okay. that, was, that was part okay. of that yes. estimate. And okay. repair curbings that were damaged. Okay. Because when we had the towers put in and then we had a cut out, yeah. Right to provide more parking space, we took the island out. Right, and that's part of wanting to do the septic pumps too. If I have to dig up the asphalt to patch in that the conduits sense. and stuff, then okay. it'll all get paved okay. and hopefully be done. Okay, and, and Sheila, I noticed. Um, I guess it was in engineering that you added the science wing in here. Yes, but we it was in engineering, but it wasn't in town properties. Uh, was that just a... I think it was in engineering before. Um, we can decide to move it to a different department. Okay. Um, okay. uh, they, in, in December, I have another meeting with uh, the school. Uh, I just want the board to know that we originally had $400,000 in uh, uh, the renovation of the science wing. As you know, the science wing is going to remain. Uh, we're not going to demolish that. It's going to become a town building. Um, I don't think the original 400,000 was enough, so I'm putting in another 200,000. Remember that 250,000 on the bond issue for the new high school is coming over to the town. That's going to net that number out. And that's in it. 
it's an agreement we have with the school system that we're going to take that over. Okay. It's a building that we don't want to see destroyed. It's just too new. Yeah. Okay. And plus, it will service uh, the stadium field, bathrooms, concession stands, the weight room, and park and rec is going to be responsible for maintaining that. Okay. Makes sense. But it's in engineering now. I, and I, I think, yeah, that we can put it certainly for the example. I, I, I didn't question that with well, Jim, sorry, here. And, I, <laughs> and I, I didn't question it then because I've asked Jim to kind of spearhead that for the town. Okay, so, just want to bring Jim right. Well, I guess that's why it's in engineering. That's what we can do. <laughs> He's going to work with Cliff on that. So. Okay. Steve can do it all. He's in. Probably do for a lot cheaper. <laughs> okay. Anybody? Yeah. Uh, anything else for Steve? I have one yes. question about this. That we, you know, um, we we've used a lot of the energy task force funds that we've had, uh, two hundred thousand a year towards uh, energy projects in these uh, buildings in the police department. There's still two hundred thousand from prior years, mm -hmm. and I don't know whether you want to consider that. You just I, it's there. I would like to keep it as because it's been very. Um, it's like a contingency. Almost. It's a contingency, particularly when we had to use it for uh, the police department when the poor chief got shocked <laughs> when he saw what the DTT, the DTC came in with right. with their their building quotes. Uh, we were able to use it as well with natural gas conversion. Yeah, right. right yeah. So, I mean, that would be my proposal when we finally decide on this. Okay. Cool. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, I don't see anybody here from building or planning and zoning. Do we have any, anything for them now? I left the truck in for the building department. Okay. It was something that was in last I know. year. For 15, we moved it to 16, and I don't know. Okay. We'll find out. Uh, Bill definitely needs a four wheel drive. So well, that's it's, why it's, it's in the there. plan, yes. Yeah. Shall I have to go? Do I leave this here? Yes, yeah. and I will update it. He'll help it. Okay. Okay, Kim. Good morning. A um, couple little things in comparison to everybody else here. Um, looking at still carrying out in, I guess, the next fiscal period, the um, 2016 year, the planet metrics uh, upgrades to the GIS system. Um, been trying to work through COG on this one. They've been trying after grants, but they've been for two years being denied on grants for this type of proposal. Um, I talked with being part of this whole um, um, CROG thing with the GIS systems there. It gets me involved with the other um, people running the, their GIS systems. I've been talking with Janice and Brantford. They have funding for updating their planometrics, and we're talking about doing a combined thing with the town of Guilford and Brantford where the flights and stuff would be pretty much a combined cost and hopefully get some savings by shared resources there. So okay, they have good. money approved in theirs and we have this budget here so hopefully we may be able to come together at least as two towns um, to get some sort of savings on planetric updates there. So. At, at the COG meeting yesterday they're still actively pursuing that. So. Yeah, they're trying to find a different wording to word out the thing in the grant proposals right. but the State right now, I guess, has other interests for the state fundings that they're going after. Oh, I know. <laughs> but uh, the COG is actively uh, yeah. working on it. Okay. Um, one thing um, yesterday is working on job descriptions for um, the new land steward positions mm -hmm. there. And one thing that came to my mind, I called Gary on it, is we will be, the person's going to need some vehicle to drive. Uh, so looking at a pickup truck for that person. Looking through public works, it looks like there's a couple might be rolling off at some point. Um, so I'm hoping that they might be in decent enough shape that we can utilize for um, driving through the woods and get to these properties for short-term mileage. Uh, I'm not sure what the um, Board of Ed has in terms of their rotation and a couple of their vehicles. So something to check on. Uh, but I really don't want to spend, buy a new vehicle for something that's going to get brushed and everything else thrown into the back of it. So. I'm looking for so there might be money added into the regular budget for maintenance and upgrades on 
a used vehicle or a vehicle being turned over to us after okay. check on Good. I just suggested that Kevin throw it in just to remind us all that if we put a steward in place, it's worth starting he with needs some vehicle. physical resources to uh, do, do the job. I mean, Bill's vehicle is coming up as yeah. a smaller pickup truck. Eventually, they're going to need a full size so they can carry okay. two by eights, two by ten foot long pieces where a six foot pickup truck, the thing's hanging four feet out the back. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's something reliable, too. Okay. Yeah. Just a uh, Heads up on a future. Good. Okay. Good. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Sheila, uh, you want to take care of the uh, IT stuff? Oh, sure. That's the last one we have. We're out of time, Sheila. Yeah, well, I'll be very fast. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's leaving for vacation, so she, you know she's going to be quick. They're really, we, we, all we really did with IT is just extend the, um, the plan into uh, uh, fiscal 19. With the replacing PCs, we um, we're on a schedule of replacing about 10 PCs a year. We'd like to do more, but we just don't have the staff to. You know, there's 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 quite a bit that goes uh, into uh, giving a new computer desktop to a uh, department and to. So um, it's a limitation of staff. It it, uh, it is. You know, deploy yeah. and support. Yeah. Yes, deploy is really more than the support for the new for new computers. Um, okay. It's very time consuming. But we did add uh, fiscal 19 and 20, $11,000 each year. Good. Prices are pretty stable on the computers. And uh, we did it for printers as well for 19 and 20. I believe there's one other item. I didn't see um, 19 device. and 20 on my sheet here. Uh, yeah, we don't have anything. Okay, to well, things. it's in the, well, I'll check the, uh, the cover sheet, but we do have the. Okay in your section we do have the budget requests and um, we did request um, uh, a gateway add-on software um, for um, the network for $1,995 for fiscal 16 it's just a replacement item um, that sure. you know we, we always are concerned that we don't want to wait till something breaks down we try to uh, replace what was, what was that again, Sheila? it's um, we call it the, uh, in a, it's a gateway uh, appliance security. Oh, it's on the it's not on the Yeah, it's not on the summary. Somebody didn't just update the summary. Okay. All right. It's a, it's a small item, general fund, $1,995. Yeah. Uh, it's a network device. Okay. Okay. So there's no major no. upgrades at all here. At this point, no. Okay. Usually, I mean, five years out, you can't even think about it. I mean, we really don't have, um, the, you know, we have servers that we keep on top of and, and we re replace them on a schedule and there's no, no servers at this point. Um, I have a, an inventory list that I usually have for you in, in the book and you'll have it in your, when you get our next meeting, you'll have the inventory so you can see the, the age of all of our servers and actually all of our computers okay. and all the software that's on each. Sheila, what were the laptop tablets for the electronic polling places with the registered voters? How many does that represent? That is 10, I believe, and also um, there's other uh, software, checker books that goes with it, and the oh, registrar I, I requested, security, 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 that's part of software. information systems budget as well. They've requested, um, uh, well, they, they have a quote that if it, we pay for the uh, software and checker books up front, it's, it's a savings, it's $6,000. So that would be for fiscal 16. And then the, the laptops are divided into two years. Okay. Yeah, that's going to say 10 laptops and software for $9,500. There was some discussion a while back about providing uh, particularly for the finance with laptops. Are you still considering that? Let me pull the board. Okay. Uh, I think it, it would be a nice to have. We, you know, the yeah. Paperwork Reduction Act. Um, well, I, I think might have a couple of members that might be resistant to that. So <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Not, not, none of them were sitting near me today. <laughs> I think it's a great idea of tablets. Um, that we could make changes, and you can see real-time changes if we use Dropbox, for example. And right. It's definitely, and the prices have come down. Right. Since